Let's look at a few more examples of related rates problems. These ones might be a little bit simpler, I think, than the latter problems. So I think they'll be a little bit more approachable if you felt overwhelmed in the last video. So the first example we'll look at, suppose that we have a point that's moving along the graph of y cubed equals x squared. When the point is at negative eight comma four, its y coordinate is changing by two units per second how fast is the x coordinate changing? So this one I think is a lot more approachable. It's a little bit hard to draw a picture. You could graph this function. Um, you might need to use a program like Desmos or you might need to use a graphing calculator. You'd have x to the 2 thirds, which I believe would look something like this. Oops, it looks something like this. But I don't necessarily need to even know what the graph looks like for this example because they gave me the equation. They said, all right, we're working with y cubed equals x squared. So they gave me the equation that relates x and y. They even gave me some other information. They gave me the point, which here, even though I don't have a graph or a picture like I did in the last example, I would still organize this information. I would say, okay, x, that's equal to negative eight. y, that's equal to four. Let's see, what else do we know? It's y coordinate is changing by two feet per second. So a few things jump out at me. First is the word changing. Anytime we think about change, I want you to be thinking about the derivative. And then the other thing I see is this rate right here, two units per second. Anytime you see a rate like this, two units per second, there we're talking about the derivative. So we're talking about the derivative of its y coordinate. So that means dy over dt or y prime. It says two units per second. It doesn't say whether it's positive or negative here. In this case, we'll just have to assume that it's positive. We would like to know how fast is this x coordinate changing. So at, at the end of this problem, we want to be able to say what is dx over dt? What does that look like? So here, again, I've organized my information. Even though I don't have that picture, I think this is going to be incredibly helpful for us once we find our derivative. So let's go find our derivative. I'm gonna take the derivative of this function with respect to time. So I wanna take the derivative with respect to t. So I need to use implicit differentiation here. Derivative of y cubed, that's gonna be three y squared times either y prime or dy over dt equals on the right hand side, derivative of x squared, that's gonna be two x times the derivative of x with respect to time, so either x prime or dx over dt. So here's my derivative, I found my derivative. Let's take everything that we know and plug it into that derivative. So let's see, Oops, let's erase this so we don't mix it up for a negative. Three times y, what is y? That's four squared times dy over dt, that's two, equals two times x is negative eight, times dx over dt. So I should have this equation which I can solve for dx over dt. So let's see, this is uh, three times 16 times two is equal to negative 16 dx over dt. Uh, let me just check my math on that left-hand side again. Don't want to make a silly mistake. I've got 96 equals negative 16 dx over dt. So dividing my 16, I should have a negative 6 equals dx over dt. So dx over dt is equal to negative 6. Here in this case is really not a great way for me to check the sign. I just have to assume that it's going to be negative. I suppose if you looked at the graph, you could sort of intuit what the rate of change of x is, um, but I think that's a little bit more complicated than what we need to be doing. Um, I would like to see a unit on your answer though. So the rate of change in y is given by units per second. 
units of x, I don't have one, I'll just say units. And then per second, that's our unit of time, so negative six units per second. Here is my answer. There is my derivative of x with respect to time. Let's look at another example, this time a more quote unquote real world problem. Here I have a retail store that estimates that its weekly sales S and its weekly advertising costs X, both which are measured in dollars, are related by the function S equals 50,000 minus 20,000 E to the negative 0 0.00000 for x. So this seems important. Let me maybe write this down. S equals 50,000 minus 20,000 e to the negative 0 0.12344 4 x. The store is currently spending $2,000 per week and it decides to increase its advertising budget by $300 per week we would like to know what is the impact of this increase on sales. So I have my, my equation that relates S and X, which is good. I need to label out as much information as I can. Let's organize what information that we, we have and let's figure out what we're trying to, to, to know in this problem. It says the store is currently spending $2,000 per week. So that's how much I'm spending. Those are my weekly advertising costs X. So X is currently $2,000. It says and decides to increase the advertising budget by $300 per week. Hopefully this is the word that jumps out at you is increase, or you can say see dollars per week right here. Both of those tell me we're talking about a derivative. Right, so we're increasing our advertising budget with was x. So dx over dt is a positive 300 because we're increasing that advertising budget. At the end of this problem, we would like to know what will be the impact of this increase on sales, or in other words, find the rate of change of sales. So remember, sales was s. We're looking for ds over dt. That's what I'm looking for. Now, notice they didn't actually tell me what my sales currently are. If you wanted to, you could go find that. You could take x equals 2000, plug it into your equation, and then solve for s. Sometimes we don't need every single little piece of information though. And let's, I'm actually gonna show that we don't actually even need to know what S currently is. If I was to take the derivative with respect to time of this equation, again, we're using implicit differentiation here, I need to use my chain rule. Derivative of S, that's one times dS over dt for my chain rule, equals Derivative of 50,000, well, derivative of 50,000, that's just zero because 50,000 is a constant, minus, be real careful with this guy here, we actually have a chain rule, and actually we sort of have two chain rules. Because I see this e to the negative 0.0004x, so first of all I need to multiply by the derivative of that power, so let's see, minus 20,000, times negative 0 0.0004, oops, you know, I forgot a zero, zero four. Well, what's the derivative of x with respect to time? That will be dx over dt. But then this part stays exactly the same, right? Derivative of e to the x is e to the x, so I should still have e to the negative 0 0.00004x. And boy, I'm just running out of room here. Oops, um, let's do this, dx over dt, let's move that. dx over dt we said was 300, just to give myself a little bit more room. So at this point, 
let's see. We said ds dt before I erased it. We said this is what we're looking for. This is what I'm looking for. dx dt, I know what that is, that's 300. Remember e, this is just a constant, just in case we've forgotten. Remember e is just a constant, I know what that number is. 2.718, I believe. x, well that's also a number that we have. We know that x is currently 2000. So I should be able to take the information that I have and plug it into this expression. Let's actually simplify this first though. 1 times ds over dt, that's just ds over dt, equals here if I take 20,000, so if I take 20,000 times 0 .00004, I've got 0 0.8 e to the, uh, oops, what did I forget? I forgot my dx dt. 0.8 dx over dt e to the negative 0.00004x power. So now I would say, okay, we've, we've kind of cleaned it up as much as we can. Let's take what we know and plug it into that derivative. So ds over dt, this is what I'm looking for, is equal to 0.8 times dx dt, this is 300 times e to the negative 0 0.00004 times x, x is 2000. So okay, what do we get here? Let's multiply this out. And I certainly can't do this in my head, so I've got 240 times e to the negative 0 0.00004 times 2000. I have Roughly 221.55 if I round to the nearest cent here. Since we're talking about sales, we're, we're measuring that in dollars. And actually, I should say, we're not necessarily just talking about sales. We're talking about the rate of change of sales with respect to time. So what are my units here? $221.55, and I actually just said it, $221.51. Oops, $221 per, what is my unit of time? My unit of time per week right here, our problem said. So per week. Does the answer make sense? Well, if we increase our advertising budget, right? That was what dx dt represents. If I spend more money on advertising, I've got a positive derivative there. Does it make sense that I would have a positive derivative here? What that's saying is that the sales are increasing. So if I spend more money on advertising, do I, does it make sense that I would make more money back on sales? Yeah, I think that's that's safe to say. Um, so yeah, and you can kind of actually look at this and say, well, is it worth it to increase our advertising budget by $300 per week if we're only gonna make an extra $221 in sales per week? And that's a decision that you would have to make in the quote unquote real world. So these are a couple more problems. I think that these problems are a little bit more approachable than the latter problem. Um, we're gonna look at a few more in the next example just because I, I wanna cover a lot of examples of related rates. I think that um, this is a section that students find challenging. So I want to show you as many examples as we can get in here.